All right, good uh, afternoon. So uh, we are officially post noon and I am standing between you and lunch. So I take that responsibility very seriously. And we'll make sure that this talk is on time and to the point. So today uh, I'm gonna be talking about juggling Argo rollouts for progressive delivery across multiple services. How many people are using Argo rollouts today? Hand raise. Okay, like actually like not a ton of people from this audience. So a lot of you are new to Argo rollouts and um, hopefully this, uh, some of these concepts are gonna translate and make sense. My name is Dan Garfield. I am a co-founder and chief open source officer of a, an amazing company and team called CodeFresh. Um, we've got a booth out there. We uh, helped create ArgoCon and we maintain Argo and we helped graduate Argo and we've been involved in this space for a long time. You can follow me on Twitter at Today Was Awesome. I mostly just snarkily complain about uh, Kubernetes and um, things like that. So if you're into people that complain and whine, Twitter is, you already know, the right place to go. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, in addition to being an Argo maintainer, uh, I also helped create uh, the open GitOps standard. So if you've seen the GitOps principles, that was an initiative that I, I helped start um, with uh, some folks from Weaveworks and AWS and GitHub, so, and Azure and Red Hat. I don't wanna leave anybody out. All right, so um, let's jump into this. So uh, progressive delivery with Argo rollouts is uh, very powerful. And for those of you, and it sounds like many of you aren't necessarily super familiar with how Argo rollouts works yet, um, just a brief you know, review of this. So Argo rollouts works by having a controller that sits on our cluster and it looks for new deployment versions. Now a rollout is basically just an Argo deployment. It's really that simple. Um, you can actually take an existing Kubernetes deployment and you can just wrap it in a, roller, in, a, in a rollout. It's the exact same spec with additional options. So rollout's very simple to implement in that way. And basically what it does is the controller will monitor for changes to the rollout and then it will spin up new versions and pods according to the plan and adjust ingress and service so that uh, the traffic that you want getting there is getting there. Um, it could be a percentage of traffic if it's a canary release. It could be a blue-green deployment where it spins up everything. Um, and then it has a mechanism to run tests with an analysis template. Uh, and you can pull metrics from Prometheus or Wavefront or whatever the heck you want um, to decide if you're going to continue to promote your rollout or complete your rollout. Okay, so, so far so good, right? It's very simple, uh, progressive delivery, but it's all done in a declarative format. And Argo rollouts is extremely popular. Um, and uh, a lot of people use Argo rollouts without Argo CD. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the differences if you use this with Argo CD as far as this talk goes and some of the things that are just standalone. But a lot of people use it. Um, Salesforce famously uses Argo rollouts for like everything. They've got uh, like tens of thousands of rollouts going. Um, so every time that you do an update, this is really a way of de-risking that update, right? So that um, the blast radius of potential failure is a lot smaller. Okay, so let's just review really quickly how does a blue-green deployment work? So you've got your prod version, which is currently blue. It's the only thing that's deployed. And all of your users are currently getting traffic from that. In a blue-green deployment, we're gonna deploy the new version, spin it up, uh, and then we can actually run tests against that new version, make sure everything is good, before switching all the traffic over at once to the new version. And then if there were a problem, you can actually do like a hot swap back to the old version, right? So you can do a really quick recovery if there was something that went wrong after it was switched over. Now a canary release works similarly, right? Except it's just a portion of traffic that's getting sent over. These concepts, everybody's like, yeah, get on with it. We know this. Very simple, right? Um, so we've all seen that. Okay. So many services aren't that simple. And that's what this talk is really about. It's about handling those services that are more complex. Um, specifically applications that aren't monolithic. So if we think about a simple blue-green release, um, well, you're deploying microservices, right? We're not deploying monoliths or distributed monoliths. We're deploying microservices. And so um, these things are interdependent. So you might have like front-end, uh, a front-end version is de dependent on 
a back-end version. So if you're rolling out a new feature, and this is very common, right? You're working on a new feature, and how, how often, I mean, think about it, how often is a new feature confined to a single service? Very rarely, right? Most of the time, you want to roll out a new feature, you need to make a change to a UI and a back-end and maybe some other services in order for that feature to actually fully function, right? So um, what can happen with some applications is you deploy your new front end. And here it's showing kind of a canary release, actually, now that I look at the arrows. So pretend that it wasn't, that arrow wasn't splitting. But um, you deploy that new front end, and you've deployed a new back end. But if there is a version mismatch between your current front end and the back end, uh, like it'll explode, right? Um, because maybe the front end is trying to pull a value that's not existing on the old back end, right? So you have to be able to version these things and match them. And um, so what happens uh, a lot of the time is people get to this point where they're like, uh-oh, I tried to use canary, I tried to use a canary release, I tried to use a blue-green release, and I tried to deploy a new service, but it was talking to an old service that wasn't ready for it and the thing exploded and fell over, and so you just give up. And you're like, canary's too hard, blue-green's too hard, progressive delivery's too hard, it's like too complex to do, and uh, so you give up, you uninstall Argo rollouts, you, you unhook your deployment, and then you go home and you cry, and uh, your boss is like, yeah, canary maybe one day, blue-green maybe one day, but it's too hard. Cool, so that's the end of my talk, thanks for coming. Uh, no, no, we can do something about that, right? Um, there's a way to solve this. So we're going to talk about three scenarios, and um, I've got a giant QR code where you can follow along. This is uh, built on a blog post that, uh, and a technique that was put together by Costas, who's sitting in the front row, who's on the CodeFresh team. He's brilliant, uh, far, far smarter than we deserve. And uh, he actually came up with these techniques, and uh, he's an Argo rollouts maintainer um, and uh, does a ton of work. So. The first scenario, oh, oh, well, first let's introduce our application. So um, our application is really simple. It consists of a front end and a back end. And one of the amazing things about this application is it tells you what version it's running and what version of back end it's talking to. Uh, so this allows us to actually make sure that these versions, um, we always know what's going on. And this, this is a sample application. It's available on GitHub, and it's linked in the blog post that I mentioned earlier. And I'll have another link later that you can grab it on. So let's go through a modern application. And when I say a modern application, what I'm talking about is like that 12-factor app that is fine with talking to different versions. It's got a versioned API, right? So if I update the front end, it knows that if it's talking to the back end, uh, it, it can fail you know, gracefully. If the feature is not available, it won't expose it in the front end. If it is available, it will expose it. This is like a modern application. And this is how we should be architecting our applications, right? If we're not architecting them this way, then they're more monolithic. But a, a blue-green deployment um, is pretty simple, right? In stage one, only version one is deployed. In stage two, we deploy a new back end, right? Version two of our back end. And we can run smoke tests against that, make sure it looks good. Um, do QA, whatever, but the user's still only getting version one across the board. And then we switch over the traffic at once so that uh, now the, ver the front end is talking to the new back end. And we can again run tests on that in, in stage four. Uh, sorry, in stage three, we can run s tests against that. And in stage four, we can introduce the new version of the UI that relies on those back end changes, right? And then um, uh, people are still only getting the front end, but once we've tested it, we switch everybody over to, to two. So we've, we've got essentially two different progressive deliveries happening, um, two different blue-green deployments happening here, and they're basically happening, they're happening linearly, but they're, in, they're independent of one another. So this is, a, this is the best case scenario because you're using a modern application, it's got a versioned API, um, it's not gonna explode, so you're okay with this. Even though you have to stage out these deployments, uh, you know, to happen one after the other, this is fine, right? Um, and then scenario two is very similar, but it's the reverse. So it's like I deploy a new front end first. So maybe you have, uh, maybe you have some, uh, your front end is architected so it doesn't rely on the back end. So in that case, in stage two, that a front end gets deployed, it's still pointing to the old back end. Um, 
stage three, you've, you've switched over, you know, the users are now getting the front end traffic, stage four, you then deploy the new back end, you run smoke tests, and then stage five, everybody's getting the new version of both, right? So this is same thing as the first scenario, except in reverse, right? Because you might have an application, depending on what you're doing, um, you might have to order front end and back end differently, right? Okay, so that's, that's actually pretty simple to do today. That's just a simple, you know, Argo rollout. Um, you basically just set up two of them, and then you have some orchestration to stage them out. Maybe a CI, CD pipeline that's going to kick off one and then kick off the next one when you're done, or you, maybe you're going to fire off a job that creates the next rollout, whatever it is. So that's pretty simple. Um, but... Uh, these scenarios are unfortunately not available most of the time for a lot of users. And we would consider these legacy scenarios. So like, can I mismatch versions between front end and, and back end? If you can do that, then you're in the modern boat. But if you're not, you're in the legacy boat. And there's a couple of different situations that would put you in the legacy boat. So if the first one would be you have a feature that requires changes to two services at the same time. That's what I mentioned. Most of the time that we're deploying new features, they do require updating more than one service, right? Um, that's, the, I would say that in my experience, it's like, you know, a plurality at the very least, 40% of the time, 60% of the time that, that that's happening that way. Um, some services don't provide versioned APIs. And a lot of times companies that are just deploying services don't version their APIs because it's not worth their time. They don't view it as worth their time. Um, like, how many of you cut a release, like a Git release, when you deploy a new version of software? Like, hands up. Yeah, not that many. Yeah, it's rare, right? Most people don't do that extra step because they're like, ah, I'm the only one consuming this, or it's just my team, or it's just a couple teams, so I'm not going to cut a release. Um, so maybe they don't, you don't have uh, versioned APIs. Another issue is maybe your integration tests can't fully run, right? Until both those services are deployed, you actually can't run all of the tests that you need to run. That's another scenario. Um, and then there's another kind of bonus uh, situation that we're going to cover in here, um, which is what if you're only updating configuration and not binaries? Now, this is a, an artifact of using Argo rollouts. Uh, so here's the scenario. Imagine that you have a deployment and you've got a new image. Now, if you've used Argo rollouts, you know I update my image tag, I deploy the new rollout, Argo rollouts controller is going to pick it up and deploy it. What if I change a config map that is loading values into that pod? Everybody knows. Oh, you update the config map, and then nothing happens, right? Because the pods that are currently running, they're not going to restart, and you might it's not, there's no change to the binary to run. There's no change to the configuration of your deployment to run. So it's not going to kick off a new deployment because all you changed was a config map. So um, you'll sometimes see that there are like people using Argo CD will have like a, a, a post sync job that kills all their pods to force them to restart. Doesn't that sound terrible? It's like a terrible way to do it, right? It's like an awful... Um, it's an awful experience. You're like, yeah, good news. I kill all the pods. And I'm like, what happens if they don't restart? Like, you just have downtime? This is terrible. Um, why would you do that? So Costas came up with a really brilliant technique to handle that scenario that we're going to cover in here. OK, so this is what we're actually here to talk about is scenario three, the legacy application. Now, in this case, the user, you can see on the user timeline, they are only going to get front end and back end matching services throughout. They're only going to be using version 1, or they're only going to be version, using version 2, but they're never going to be using a mismatch like in the previous two scenarios. Um, so even though in step 2, yeah, we deploy a back end, and we can run tests against it. Stage 3, we deploy the new front end, and now we can run full integration tests on those two services that are linked. Um, and then in stage 4, we can switch over the traffic and then actually pull down those uh, previous services so you're not running them anymore. And then you have everybody moving and switching all at once. Right? This is the blue-green. Now, everything that I'm showing you applies equally to Canary releases. You can do the exact same. This exact same technique will work with a Canary release just fine. Um, for the sake of demoing, it's easier to demo it as a blue-green because um, it's more obvious what's happening. But, uh, but you, can, you can use these techniques um, for both cases. 
So the requirements to get your legacy apps running and deploying in synchronicity in the way that we've described is first, you need to have a configurable URL for accessing the services. So you can see on the left-hand side, I have an example of um, uh, some application code that is specifying where the backend host lives, and it's taking a variable from an environmental variable, right? This is just good practice anyway. Um, and uh, your, your developers, if they're not doing this, this is a pretty easy change typically for them to make. Um, and if, if you say, hey, this is going to allow us to do progressive delivery, and it's going to reduce our blast radius, and it's going to make our services more reliable, it's going to lower the barrier for you to deploy new stuff, they should be on board. Um, and then on the right-hand side, I have, uh, you can see, uh, this is from either a, con either a deployment or from a rollout. Um, and we just are pulling the value from uh, that backend host, and we're loading it from a config map, okay? Um, so the, the second component to make this work is you need to have a config map generator. Now, for those of you that are big Helm users, you might not be familiar with this because this is a customized feature. Um, and I'll show you how it works. Um, so with a config map generator, uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that we've got a config map generator, and I've set all my values. And uh, on the left-hand side, I've got my normal configuration saying that I'm going to be pulling the value from a config map, just like I would in vanilla Kubernetes, right? But here I'm using customize to do this. Now what's going to happen, and you're going to see why this is, you're all like, I don't understand why you're talking to me about this. You'll see it in a second. Um, what's going to happen when I render this customization, it's going to generate a unique config map name, and then all of those values in my deployment or my rollout are going to get updated to pull from that now unique uh, config map. So that means that I actually have two config maps when I kick off my rollout, right? The one that existed before and the new one. And the new rollout references the new config map, and the old one references the old config map. So I don't have to go kill pods. I've got a new rollout that's using the new config map. And there's no ambiguity. Can you imagine a scenario where you update your config map, and then pods accidentally die? And your, your application is now broken because it's taken new configuration. And now how do you fix it? You got to roll back. And how do you roll back? You roll back your config map, and then you kill pods. What? Terrible. Terrible. Don't do that. It's bad. So using, using this setup, your config map is versioned along with your deployment or your rollout. Okay, So that's going to be key to this technique. Um, and uh, again, I, I've thrown up the link to the blog post here. I'll let this slide sit for like three seconds if you want to scan it. And of course, the slides are going to be available afterwards. Um, OK, so let's, let's show you how this all works in action. So to do this, I've got, and hopefully you can see these reasonably well, um, I've got two, uh, I've got my service, right? Here's my application. And I've got two different. These look identical right now. They're different ports. So these are, these are looking at um, a preview version and the customer view version of my application right here. Okay? And um, I can see, you can see I've got two rollouts. This is for my front end, and this is for my back end. And they're both currently sitting steady. We haven't deployed any changes. OK. Um, now, of course, you could do this all with GitOps and using, uh, using um, you know, you're going to be making git commits, but for the sake of demo, we're going to keep it simple. So uh, here's my configuration. Whoops. OK, so here's my configuration. Here's my customization. And you can see that I'm using a config map generator. And I have settings that I'm passing to my back end to specify what version it is. And I have settings that I'm specifying to my front end to say what version it is. And I have a back end. Um, host that I'm specifying what the front end is supposed to be pointing at. Now remember, this is living on the rollout, right? So if I don't expose that to users, that new front end, people aren't going to get that traffic. Okay. So let's first start by updating the back end. We're going to move this to 2.0, and uh, let's apply that. So we're going to do a k apply manifest. Again, you can do this with with GitOps, right? Okay, so we can see this is going to kick off a new rollout. 
So now I have my deployment here. And for my, uh, for my users, by the way, if you're using port forwarding, um, anytime you change a service, you have to restart. I'm just going to restart it in the background every time. But you'll notice that there's no change, right? Because I've only deployed the back end. I haven't deployed a new front end, OK? Um, so now, in order to kick off the view for my users, I'm going to need to update my front end. And I'll also specify that the new version of my front end is going to point to backend preview. Um, and so that's going to be the service name that it's looking for in Kubernetes, just using local Kubernetes URLs, right? OK, and if I look at my backend, uh, or sorry, at my front end, you can see that it's, it's currently only got one version available, and the backend now has a, uh, two versions available, one in preview, um, not deployed yet. So I'm going to apply my changes again. And we're going to see the rollout kickoff. So we can see it now has the new version deployed. And so now I have two new versions. And if I restart my port forwards, um, again, the, the users are not going to get any difference. They're both getting front end. And if I look at my preview, they're now getting version 2.0, right? So I can now run smoke tests against this. I can run integration tests against this. I can have, uh, you know, do whatever validation I want. The users are not getting a mismatched version. Here we don't have a mismatched version. And then to complete this, all I have to do is finish promoting my blue-green deployment, right? So right now they're only available as preview, right? So if I want to switch it to, tra switch it to um, over to users, um, I'm just going to do a rollouts promote, and I'll promote the front end first. The front end is already pointing at the back end. And uh, this is going to now delete the old deployment. You can see these pods are still here, but they're going to delete in 24 seconds. And let's restart my port forwarding. And if I refresh this now, everybody's getting version 2 altogether. So they're synced up. So you have synchronicity. You have consistency for the user. Um, and if I were to do a rollback at this point, uh, it, would, it would switch everybody back to version 1, just off of switching the rollout off of my front end. Now, if I, my back end, the uh, preview version is still hanging around, but I don't need it to. So I can go ahead and promote my back end as well. And that's going to kick off. You can see it's now starting to the deletion, but it already the traffic has switched over. And again, if I switch these over... Um, you're going to see that there's no, there's no change here. They're, they're getting version 2, right? OK. So um, <laughs> hopefully that was clear what was happening. <laughs> there was a lot of moving parts, right? Um, and I think we'll have time for a question. Oh, yeah, what, what's your question? Go ahead, and I'll repeat it. Yes, that's right. So in this case, and this is, this is for demo purposes, but, and, and there's comments in here, but um, when I reset this, I should have a final step to change this back to front end, right? Um, just to reset it for the next time. But I could do it the next time that I run uh, or whatever. It doesn't matter because the front end service is going gonna, is gonna to be automatically pushing back. But you're, you're exactly correct. Okay. Now, um, you can obviously automate this process. And you can see here I've got like a CI CD pipeline. And in this case, it's deploying the new back end, it's running tests, and then it's waiting for like a manual approval. Uh, and then when people hit approve, it's going to move to the next step and deploy both. Um, and then you can do the promotion. So if, of course, you can automate this, but you would need like a CI CD pipeline to do it um, today. That would be, you know, this is legacy. And there are, of course, GitOps ways of doing this that um, CodeFresh is, we actually announced this week, which you can go check out at our booth. Um, you, so you can find like the GitOps way to do promotions. Uh, but there are a few warnings and caveats with this technique. Now, the big one is that if you're using config map gener with our, generator with Argo CD, when you are doing your promotion or rollout, it may delete the old config map before you want it to. So if you go to do a rollback, the pods won't be able to start because the config map is missing. Okay, so to fix that, all you need to do is add... Um, and you can see I've actually done it here. In your config map generator, you just need to add prune last. So that'll make sure that the config maps 
are the last thing that, to get deleted. So if you have to do a rollback, they'll be available for you. Um, and so uh, that's pretty important because if you went to do a rollback and like the config map isn't there <laughs> um, and it fails to complete the rollback, that would be a big problem. Um, and that's basically it. There you go. Thank you. Um, it, is, uh, it is lunchtime now, and the session is officially over, um, but I'll be available hanging out here if you want to ask me any questions, and, and thank you again. I uh, really, really appreciate the uh, great audience and wonderful uh, warm reception.